Hey guys welcome back to the channel. This is part 4 of what if Deku became Spider-Man. If you guys enjoy this what if and want to see part 5 of it, comment down below and let me know. Then go ahead and check out other what ifs in the channel. Before we start please do support for more awesome content. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like and also share this video with your friends. So let's start this video. Dawn breaks over the land of the rising sun. Or, it already has hours ago. Left in his bed fast asleep with his hand covered to heal the wounds made from that night, Izuku snores as he remains campy serene yet messy, with the right leg draped off his bed twitching. He rolls over in his bed, dropping and hitting his face on books he left out. The groan erupts from his throat emitted by the pain, on a single knee as he awakens. Ha! Huh. What time is it? He looks around for his alarm clock, also shaped in fashion like everything else around him is the symbol of peace, and checks the time. You were. Quickly he runs out the bedroom door dressed in his school uniform. He then checks the bandages around his burnt hand, and widens his eyes in surprise. His hand is completely healed. No scar left either. Ha! Huh. But first degree burns take 7 days to heal. Thinking about it, his body doesn't feel as heavy, or damaged despite what happened last night either. Maybe his spider body comes with enhanced healing too. Alright. That's good to know. After tossing the bandages in the trash Izuku heads into the living room. Unexpectedly, his mother isn't around, and neither is breakfast. I guess I'm picking up something along the way. Strapping his bag to his back he checks his phone for the time again, just to gain a better scale on how late he is, realizing doing it normally won't get him there on time. An ID comes to mind, and he practically shrugs to it. Well, infer yen or however that saying goes. Minutes later, Izuku climbs out from his window dressed as the spider vigilante, before making a leap swinging into the city. Gotta increase my speed. With a mighty swing, he goes high up and careens down into a nosedive for the pavement at intense dropping speed. Firing a web line he zips between cars soaring through the air like a bullet that has missed its target until making another dive, that repeats the process once more, the exhilarating feeling of soaring in almost flight, more than he could ever have felt before the incident. Something that almost makes up for being a vigilante. I should have done this sooner. This is much faster than transportation. In another dive, he stretches his arm out to fire a line, before feeling his senses turn on to some form of danger. Hmm. What am I in danger of? Coming up high again, he fires a web line to take his danger sense seriously. It is here that the danger he was warned about comes to pass, his web capsule runs empty. Quickly opening the other one he fires from the other, and nothing. Why do I keep forgetting that? He screams as he soars into the side of a building, face planting at almost breakneck speed and hitting hard enough to leave an imprint of himself. After recovering enough to come out of his pain-induced stupor, Spider-Man sits along the side of the building checking his web shooters. As he replaces the old capsule with a new and inserts it into his belt, he starts writing down notes about his plight. Note to self, make self-replacing shooters. Once done, he gets up and prepares to head for school. Get out of the way. Not even hesitating, Izuku stops in the air and zips himself to the nearest building by pulling using a web line. He then glances down at the streets below. They're down in a street fight are the heroes Mount Lady in Kamui Woods, against the shoulder man Trapezius headgear. The woodman has fallen forward with a busted arm, and the giant lady human size grasping her shoulder. Both don't look too good. Trapezius himself also looks different, his muscles are far more defined with obvious veins just ready to pop and deuce. The big guy thrusts out a middle finger. He shouts, get your sneak ass out of here now, All Might. This is the rematch. Is he still after All Might? Why? Izuku stares down while trying to come up with a plan. If two pros can't take him down then he may have to wait for All Might after all, especially if he's powered up. If no one's gonna talk, then I'm gonna force him out. The shoulder head guy turns to a family trapped in a car behind him. No time to wait anymore. Just as the villain moves for the car, Izuku leaps down from the wall to attack. He swings on a web he made and uses it to come down into an arc, kicking and launching Trapezius into the side of a building. Izuka lands after his kick and grabs the car door ripping it open. The family of three inside screams as he does so. Ignoring it, he shouts, please run. You're not safe here. He then steps away from the car and faces the shoulder man returning to the scene. You again Trapezius shouts upon seeing Spider-Man. Looking at him, Izuka remembers it. Those thoughts of trauma that froze him up are coming back. No, don't think about it. He looks back at the family still in the car. No time to be afraid. Talk, Izuku. Do anything to get over it. Why are you doing this? You lost the All Might. Not this time. Trapezius flexes his arm. Thanks to that dosage of trigger, I'm now 20 times stronger than before. Scanning him, Izuku can tell that's true. Despite fighting two pros, and getting kicked into a building, he doesn't have a scratch on him. He's not even sweating, except the face. Wait, is there a reason for that? Trapezius brings Izuku out of his thoughts by asking, what's your stake in this, huh? Where do you get off wasting my time and your life? The arachnid looks aside. That's the question of the generation. 
So many times he's been trying to wonder that and understand himself more. But Izuku has a perfect answer for that, nothing at all. Whenever I see someone in trouble, my body moves on its own. When someone needs rescuing, I won't hesitate to save them. Or, I can't. Which is just more than I can say for you. The audience surrounding them listens in close having taken in his words of a compound with structure and the heart of his resolve just earlier. Trapezius shouts, and just what can you say? Under his mask, he makes a nervous smile. You're an idiot. A tick mark forms over his shoulder head here. What? An idiot, a dope head, a Smickledorf muscle for hire, Izuku says, adding to what he spoke seconds ago. You come here trying to cause damage to the city because you got a grudge against All Might when you could do so much more with your power. Hell, so many people would kill to have the strength to reach a pro hero's level, and all you can do is cause problems for yourself. More veins pulsate at those two words. Now, not everyone wants to be some glorified cop. And the worst part is you're wasting your time. Everyone knows that All Might is working at UA High as a teacher, so he's not going to be able to fight you at all. At that, everyone stares at Trapezius. After a bit, he pounces his fist into his hand, saying, Oh yeah. You really didn't know. Almost everyone shouts. Now the pink muscle guy is turning red. Whatever. I'll just get his attention for later tonight by murdering a couple of people. Maybe even a vigilante too. I've heard enough. Kamui Woods moves in using his branches to attack Trapezius. He gets caught, but easily rips out of the prison and grabs hold of the branch still attached to him, throwing the hero into a car. Guess who first. Before he could, a car comes down at Trapezius from above and smashes him into the ground. Izuku lands next to it. If that didn't work, then there's always plan B. Much to his displeasure, the car is lifted and tossed into the air. The crowd screams in terror as it comes their way. Luckily, Izuku leaps over and grabs hold of the hood and lights, flipping himself with the vehicle to land on the ground. He then slowly places it down with a groan. Phew. His spider sense turns on when the villain comes charging at him. He fires webbing that hits the man in the face. The villain grabs the webs and pulls it off, breathing in heavily while wiping the sweat off his face. I knew it. Watching as the trapezius guy recovers, he runs off at a steady pace. How about a nice fun game of following the leader? Knowing he's following because he's not exactly quiet about it, what with the tremors that erupt every few seconds promoted by his feet stomping the earth, and the obnoxious snorting, Izuku starts thinking about his on-the-fly plan. Okay, let's see, only large cities with high-rising buildings would have those things, but coming to a utility tunnel is less likely. He would even be able to fit in one of those. Instead, he comes before a spa building and enters, coming before the counter lady. Giving a polite wave, because his very appearance is promoting fear for some masking bloody reason, he asks as nicely as he can despite his situation, where are your steam rooms? She politely points down the hall, but only for a second, for lo and behold the shoulder jerk has made his appearance. Busting through the door he stands, everyone else running away out of fear. Thought you could lose Viha. Huh? Rule number one when fighting, never let the bad guy see you bleed. The game isn't over yet. This joke leads the chase down the hall, where Emerald protagonist runs along the wall dodging the impactful crash. He then enters the sauna, quickly hitting the max temperature. Inside the small yet spacious blue sauna, Izuku takes a seat on the counter while he waits. As he does the air thickens within the room quickly, surrounding him in a white blanket so hard he's losing more sweat than blood at this rate. If he thought hard enough his thoughts could be written out on the misty canvas. Soon his guest arrives, squeezing into the rather large door. Good, you finally where I want you. Yeesh. Getting hot in here for you, he asks, waving to his trapezius buddy. Of course, this gets a fist thrust at him. Sliding underneath his legs Izuku closes the door, before quickly bouncing around the place as fast as his gash would let him. From the ceiling to the glass wall to the floor in front of trapezius headgear, the spectacular spider in red, black, and green, makes his hops about, despite effectively dodging all his attacks. He's keeping it rather close to trapezius's range to essentially avoid his blows without him moving so far as a meter in any direction. A total of two minutes go by before the arachnid slows down. He isn't the only one as well, despite not a single scratch on him Trapezius is, ironically, a little low on steam. You can't keep this up forever. His tone sounds more lazy and drone-like now. His mouth starts to look dry. What's wrong? You stop spouting off, says Spider-Man before landing out of the sealed space he put him in. It's only a matter of time now. So, I realize that everyone lost to you because they tried to hurt you when they couldn't. Yeah, that was dumb. He says between gasps, face so drenched his eyes burn. Boss used trigger and boosted my quirk. I'm impenetrable now, nothing can beat me. Yeah, that's true. Izuku walks just in front of him, stepping back again to avoid his slowly grasping hand. But if nothing can get in, nothing can get out either. Your face has to sweat for your entire body, because the rest of you can't perspire. It's probably enough under most conditions, but in a sauna. He makes a weak swipe again. Not even bothering to dodge, he pushes his entire body. The trapezius lands with a light thud as he breathes so fast he may as well be hyperventilating. 
Hopefully, whatever trigger is starts sweating out of you. I hate you so much. He mutters while groaning, unable to move another inch. Izuka lands on top of his body, crotch to feet knees bent staring at the big man. He points to Pizius' face and asks, who sent you after All Might? No response. He's out of it. His body's even shrinking, no longer the bulking bruiser. Oh well. I guess I've done all I can. The gashed spider stands up feeling his blood still coming out. He webs him down to the floor and turns down the heat. Hearing the police sirens nearing closer with each passing second, he climbs out of the window just in time to see Mount Lady and Kamui Woods staring at him. Oh, good. You got this right. He prepares to run away, stopping at her voice. Wait, did you? He looks back as he sticks to a wall. Thanks for helping. It's okay. No, it's not. The titanic beauty glances to the side with a slight redness in her cheeks. I'll make sure to pay you back for that. Ah, uh, sure. And with that, he takes off climbing up the wall. Kamui eyes him as he leaves. Another one. As Izuku makes his exit from the scene, he swings off for school. He checks his phone while swinging from a thread for the time. If I hustle I can still make it in time. While swinging, his thread is cut, and Izuku ends up falling to a building. He rolls along the floor up to his feet. What was that? Nice moves, Spider-Man. A voice in his head catches Izuku's attention, causing him to look around for the source of it. 4 o'clock. Turning to that cardinal position, he glances at the person approaching him, only to immediately burn up inside his mask. The figure is dressed in black leather, from what he can tell, which has white fluff on her collar, with a face mask that exposes her mouth and eyes. Her gloves are the same shade of ice white, including her hair. She wears shoes of the same bland shade as well. Though the longer he looks, the more he sees the detail of her outfit. The darkness on her body is so tightly held that every last curve and muscle isn't left to the imagination. Even the front is exposing cleavage the way only a tight suit can hold. Seeing her he assumes a label on her. A burglar. How rude, she speaks, her voice a seductive trance. You have offended me, and now you must pay the price. You gonna? Izuku stutters with his words as she approaches him, a bit of sway in her hips. No matter what he wishes to say he can't even bust out. Each step twists and turns her waist in a way he couldn't ignore. Luckily his mask is on. Going somewhere, Spider-Man. You don't want to fight me. Now now. She places a finger to his lips. Cats don't fight spiders. Her foot plants into his stomach, sending him backward. We just bat them around. She spins in the air to throw another kick, but he jumps to the side on all fours as she slips to the edge. Nice shot cutie. Get out of my head. He suddenly says, having heard a voice in his head. This distracts him enough before he could react to his spider sense, and gets pushed to the floor. Distraction. She stretches her hand back, claws retracting. She rears them back to swipe, but he kicks her off with both legs before flipping to all fours. The lady rolls in the air onto her hands and feet too before rushing forward. The woman swipes at him as soon as he stands back up with the right hand, causing Izuku to deflect it. She follows up with another from her left upward, but he also blocks, but not as strong as he wanted to. She then spins in the air mounting a back kick that plants her heel into his chest, knocking him on his back. She's good. She is far better coordinated than Trapezius. Does Miss Distraction have a name? Of course, my dear, she begins, pulling out a shuriken in the shape of a cat. You can call me Black Cat. She rears her hand back to mark her throw. Before she could, Wubin covers her hand trapping the shuriken in her grasp. More attached to her feet, and the woman is pulled off her footing hitting the back of her head. Another splash of webbing attaches to her other hand, trapping her in place on the roof. Well I would love to fight you more, and ask about your quirk, I have an appointment to make. Izuku then jumps over the roof. Black Cat extends her claws to slice off the webbing and stand up. She then heads to the roof pulling a pistol from her left hip. Sadly, as she goes to aim, the spider has disappeared. There is no sight of him anywhere. Sighing, the cat woman takes out a flip phone and rapidly presses numbers to make a call. This is Black Cat, he got away. I'll have to go about this differently. What an intriguing sight to behold. A blue monitor forged into the wall of a dimly lit room shows a video of Spider-Man's scuffle with Trapezius headgear. That was pretty cool. I can't believe all that work to make him tougher than All Might failed. Losing to a vigilante in a contest of strength. A small object flies in towards the monitor, the blue illumination revealing it as a yellow jacket. The yellow and black striped insect lands on the side of the plasma television, its stinger is a USB drive. It inserts into the side, and the screen shows a picture-in-picture -picture box of what's been recorded. Videotape from just outside the spa house through a window, it shows Spider-Man and Trapezius entering the sauna. After waiting a bit, the arachnid pulls him out as his regular state. He reverted. It couldn't have worn off. He must have done something, this Spider-Man. Who is he anyway? The two voices turn their eyes to their third party. Spider-Man, check the registry for any spider-type quirk. This might be that mistake. Later. Sendimon looks around the class, taking note of all the students present and accounted for. 
As she does, the door bursts open and in rushes Izuku dressed in his school attire, panting heavily. Am I? Late again Midoriya, she tells him callously. So late you are that maybe you should consider sleeping at the school. That way you'll start showing up at the first second. She then hands him a slip of paper. Schedules run the world, Midoriya. If you can't be on time for something as easy as school, no job in the world will hire you, and if you can remember, that you'll be after school at that time cleaning crap off the floor. Sighing, Izuku takes his seat as he gets laughed at by his adoring public. Just another day in the life of Spider-Man. Everyone, file in neatly in order from your ID and properly. My god, will you shut the fuck up. Akugo, language. Over at UA, the class of Wana gathers together at the banks of their campus, stationed before a bus the size of a commercial one. This blue and white vessel as large as a greyhound opens its doors, allowing the 2014 to 16 year old children to enter at their own volition and pace. The walking nuke Bakugo makes his entrance as the last person, sitting next to the earphone girl Jiro begrudgingly. To the surprise of the first person speaking, a boy encased head, to toe in white and blue armor with a cerulean cape attached who possesses glasses and a strict facial expression, the bus is nowhere near what he was expecting, hence why he's in such a depressed state. He sits in the middle of the bus on the left a third of four others, facing Momo, who is dressed in a revealing skin-tight red suit. It was this type of bus. He mutters as humiliated as possible, pounding his knees as the bus takes them further along to their destination. It's not that big a deal, says a boy with spiky red hair sitting just next to him. The creating girl holds up her smartphone watching a video effectively as time passes them within the bus. A bright smile widens across her face as she sighs with relief, while her dark onyx eyes view the screen. It shows the Spider-Man fighting against Trapezius earlier this morning. Class president speaks acidly to the class's smartest girl, I can't help but notice something about you and your fascination with Spider-Man. Momo twitches in her seat at the frog girl's surprising words. Forcing a straight face she asks, what what do you mean? You look kind of worried whenever you see him, she speaks, adding more to her nervousness. It's a little surprising that Asui is so effectively discerning and noticeable of certain things, almost like a person peering at her life outside of her reality. I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, wouldn't anyone be worried seeing a reckless idiot like him fighting? Or at least mad that he's doing so. Not me, says the red-haired one with a sharp tooth grin, a thumbs up boasted with approval. I think he's pretty awesome. His usage of webbing is just like my tape ability, says a boy up in a higher row facing down the seats from the back of the bus. He raises his hand showing the raw ejector that his elbow has, including the small opening shaped like a slit. I could probably traverse high with those movements if I can pull it off. So you aren't supporting his actions, asks the frog girl, her expression as solid and unchanging as ever. No? Why would I? I don't even know the guy. She says in defense, holding her hands out shaking rapidly. Asui turns her face forward going back to spacing out, leaving the president to resume thinking. Now curious herself, Momo has to ask her, why the sudden curiosity in Spider-Man? The frog girl sighs looking down at her knees now, concealed by her green, yellow, and black skin-tight bodysuit. I disagree with him. It doesn't matter, if your intentions are noble. If you break the law, you know better than the people you stop. Following the laws established is what separates us from villains who do as they please and cause havoc. Those words remain planted in their hearts as seconds go by. The class president shamefully looks aside while those words pierce her thoughts. Asui. Call me Tsuyu. Katsuki, sitting complacently in his seat with rather hateful eyes. From his mouth spouts the sentence, can we talk about something else besides that loser? What, like your attitude problem? Kaminari's words light the fuse to the explosion of swears that erupt from the walking nuke. What's that? It sounded like the countdown to your destruction. Kaminari grins glaring at Katsuki. It's only been a couple of days, and we're already well aware of your unpleasant shit pile of a personality. That makes his mood worse. Big words coming from someone I'm gonna pound. Bakugo shouts as the class president holds her mouth at the vulgar words being spoken. Asui keeps her remaining focus on the forefront of her mind. Those thoughts collect about one single fact, one that she decides to voice. Bakugo, why did you call Spider-Man a loser? He just is. Momo flinches when she notices that as well. He'll blow Izuku's secret. Bakugo, don't. You hate him for some reason. The frog girl queries. He glares at her, before staring off to the side with his head resting in his right palm. Look, who cares about that loser? He'll never be a hero. The class president groans inwardly at that. This is not going to end well if she figures it out. Just stop talking about it Bakugo. Soon the bus arrives at their destination. Everyone steps out to what looks to be Universal Studios Japan Edition. There are many types of areas in this location. A flood zone, a landslide zone, and a conflagration zone, as well as even a collapsed building zone among others. Welcome to the unforeseen simulation joint, a facility of my design, speaks a hero standing there greeting them. He's wearing an astronaut-styled suit with a black globe protecting his head. Yue, it's the Space Hero 13, says a teen hero through her ninja mask. 
The homeroom teacher glances up at All Might, who stands beside the teacher with that ever-present grin on his face in a yellow tuxedo. Nice to see you're on time for once. Well, it could have been worse. Luckily, someone took over all the crime this morning, he replies. It's a shame I still need to capture him though. The class president catches that, knowing who he means. But well, let's get this going, says Aizawa before turning to 13. Before we begin, allow me to make a few points. 13 begins. As many of you are well aware I'm sure, my quirk is called Black Hole. It sucks up and tears anything apart. But, while I use it to save people from disasters, you have to understand that my power could easily kill. This serious tone gravitates attention toward 13. I'm sure there are some of you who are aware that your abilities are enough to kill others. That is why we have laws restricting quirks heavily. While a stable system, it takes just one wrong move for one uncontrollable quirk to take a life. And that's where we come to you, eh, and the tests you've taken before this. Aizawa's fitness test showed you the hidden potential of your quirks. All Might's battle training allowed you to experience the danger that your respective quirks can pose to others. My training will show you a new perspective on your quirks and how they can save lives, and by the end of the day, realize that as heroes your powers are meant to help people. That is all. Thank you for listening. The armored person claps him off. Later. At 1600 in Misatafu, where a group of students can be seen walking through the halls of Jai Akuhai. Among the many remaining are the students tasked with cleaning the floors. It is here we find Izuku amid his punishment, dipping his mop and then draining to swipe across the floor like a sword through a dragon's hide. It's boring so the imagination's running wild. Whoa, check it out, says a student walking across the halls behind him. The Emerald protagonist turns around to spot a group of kids watching videos. That spider guy is pretty cool for a creepo in a scary mask, says another person as they leave his peripheral. Hearing them, a smile graces Izuku's face as he goes back to cleaning. While doing so, someone asks him, why are you so happy cleaning dirt off the floor? Might as well enjoy what you do, is his reasoning, Rita's lie, to the blue-haired girl from his class. Anything you need from me, Miss Satomi. That's class representative to you. She thumbs back to another person behind her. This new guy has messy black hair large enough to lace over top of his face. It's about as big as Izuku's with similar locks matching the emerald spider. His eyes are of a deep red, more of crimson blood than the scarlet courage that Katsuki holds, hidden underneath the untamed forest of hair he possesses. A black spot burnt within his skin below the right of his lips, can be seen as the destination of the scar descending his right eye. Unlike his peers, he has the vest of his uniform draped over his arms and shoulders instead of wearing it. Above that, he has on fingerless mauve gloves with a magenta glow from a bulb on the back of them. Oh? Hello, he says politely to the new guy. And he is. A junior who will be joining your punishment, she says before turning to the silent teen. So is the elder, I hope you can. The nameless senpai pushes her aside to grab a mop, one of those types with a built-in squeezer. I don't need to be told how to clean up someone's act, are his words, before he gets to the wet works. The frowning she delivers evolves into a pout as she walks away, ignored by the loner and the loser as they proceed to clean. With her gone, the new guy sighs as he pours a portion of the bucket over. Izuku's mouth opens into a gaping hole as the chemicals spread across the floors, before he asks, what was that for? It's easier this way, he replies before going back to work. He stops for a bit to turn back at him. Hey, you working or not? A sigh escapes his lips before he proceeds to swap the halls, as twilight settles in over by the windows. Quitting time. Shouting, the senpai with black hair walks down the cleaner halls and out the front doors without a care as he stretches his arms. The spider hero follows after, writing down notes. While leaving, Izuku's nameless associate notices his book, asking, what's that? Oh, these are notes I make about heroes. He replies with glee. I compile a list of heroes and their quirks and how they can be worked in various ways. Does that include All Might, is his dull response. He's got an entire chapter. He shows him page after page about the hero everyone loves so dearly. Of course, he includes everything about All Might as he wanted, except for two important facts regarding his true self learned last year. Wanna see? Not on your life, nerd. Hurt, Izuku sinks into depression as he prepares to walk away. It's too late to join the science club's activities, and he needs to get back home to work on schoolwork. No time for Spider-Man tonight either, as if his punishment and torment from this morning weren't enough. Not to mention there's now someone after him. Wait. He stops looking back at his new companion. Those crimson eyes of his turn an eye down at his notebook. Do you have any notes on villains? Huh? That's a rather odd question, why would he be interested in villains and not heroes? Nevertheless, Izuku hands over his notebook showing a page all on the various villains that have appeared in the media he's recorded. Showing it, he reveals to his senpai notes jotted on trapezius headgear, toxic chainsaw, sludge man, as well as other villains All Might has triumphed over. As he shows him, Izuku notes with surprise the joy and intrigue on his face, when rivaled by himself when it came to heroes. This is pretty cool, I had no idea toxic chainsaw was like that. 
His grin widens further as he goes along reading more lines and checking out more of his doodles. Now Izuku feels he should ask. Say, why do you like villains so much? Because they're so much cooler than heroes and so much more honest. At least you can count on them to do what they do. As he resumes his scanning, Izuku frowns when he catches the tone he spoke in. I'll take my leave now. He takes back his notes and prepares to leave. I guess I'll see you later all might. How he quickly turns around facing where Izuku is looking, a store with videos playing on the side of the windows. One of which plays an image of All Might, involved in an interview from last night. Izuku quickly goes to the screen to view the video, smiling. He looks better in person. Whatever. With that, it's become more and more obvious how much he dislikes heroes. But this makes him realize he particularly hates All Might. Why that is he has a clue. There are plenty of warning signs for this guy, but that's not new. There were lots of people who idolize villains all over the internet, and a lot of them come across as harmless fanboys. Like himself once upon a time. Breaking news. Hmm. Turning around, Izuku spots the news has changed. As the fox lady who bashed him before appears on the screen, down below reads, Attack at UA High School facility by Villain Alliance. 20 students involved. This slabbergasts the hell out of him. How could a hero facility be attacked by villains? Why would a hero facility be attacked by villains? Is All Might okay? Did Momo and Koch Chan make it out safely? Taking out his phone he makes a call that goes to voicemail after a long wait. He won't be getting through, if it's like that. But he has to know. I'll see you at school tomorrow. Blasting off at full speed, Izuku runs straight for nowhere. This lasts until he starts heading for Momo's residency, not bothering to change into his vigilante uniform or obeying traffic, any car in his way he jumps over the hoods, as he beelines it for his friend's address hoping she's there in one piece. They're at her boat, far out near the Aichi prefecture, in an area surrounded by trees and gates between a solid road. It feels like the suburbs except fancier. The front gate that opens up expands far enough for cars to drive out, and there lies an intercom where he presses a button to call in. Thinking about it, this is his first time visiting her home. They would always meet in the city or at his place. It's surprising just how loaded she is when it all sinks and how far out of the city he had to run. Hello? Speaks someone on the other end. It sounds like an older woman, probably her mother. I'm here for Momo Yoyorozu. I, Begin, insect. That was harsh she feels. The Yoyorozu family does not have any comments to deliver you parasites, so leave. I'm not the news. My name is Izuku Midoriya, a friend of hers. Get lost. We're not taking any guests today. And she's not taking any visitors. Shut down, Izuku sighs as he makes his way off for home. He can expect a visitor at another time, hopefully, when she's free and or her mother, he assumes that was her mother, is in a better mood. On his way back he checks his phone feeling a ring, before quickly, to the point of almost dropping it, answering when he sees Momo's name on the collar it. Yoyorozu. Midoriya, she says on the other line. I see mother wouldn't allow you in. He breathes a sigh of relief hearing her voice. Look, I heard. Let's talk tomorrow, at your place. Good night. She then hangs up on him, leaving him to run back to the city and its crouching night. On his way home he opens his phone to call. Koch-chan. Koch-chan, answer the phone. Deku, not fucking now. The phone then hangs up. Well, at least he's okay. Sighing, he picks up the pace heading for home. Elsewhere. I can't believe it was a bus. All Might was still at 100%. We were careless. Yes, you were Kurigiri. Maybe you'd have had better luck had Tom Yura been there. I had my reasons. Anyway, Tom Yura, how is that task I asked of you? According to City Hall, there is no record of a Japanese with a spider based quirk, and the closest we have is an American woman overseas. This means you may be right, Master. This Spider-Man is a result of the experiments we worked upon for your body. We finally found a successful experiment. That doesn't make sense. The experiment was made for. Do not worry about this, Kurgiri. The name of the Villain Alliance is still cheap, so we can move in silence. Next time, you will introduce yourself to All Might Tomyur. You will be the catalyst for exposing his biggest secret. Wednesday at Jayaku High, Izuku sits in his homeroom looking at notes of Mount Lady he jotted earlier. The rest of his class prepared to leave out and do club activities, ignoring the murmuring creep left to his devices. Midoriya speaks to Tomi peering out from behind the door. As he writes up one final thing he begins packing, while looking at her, before she asks, Are you coming to the club tonight? Can't. I got a meeting with a friend of mine later. Oh? She sounds rather disappointed. You should take the time, to come to places you've placed your time in before cut all ties. You're not being much of a rival here, Midoriya. He blinks a smile. I'll be sure to show up tomorrow night. Bye. He politely walks away, leaving her behind to wave half-heartedly. On his way across the halls, being careful to avoid the ones being mopped, he spots his cleaning buddy in the detention room watching a PSA video. He peers in just as All Might appears on screen, sitting seat forward in the middle of a vague hallway. So, you got detention. You screwed up. You know what you did was wrong, he begins while looking at the camera. Knowing what you did, is half the battle. 
What you need to think about is how to make it up. That's enough for Izuku as he leaves, heading for home for that important meeting. Not even bothering to change into Spider-Man he takes a bus to his apartment. There he finds nothing out of the ordinary, you know besides the black limo stationed right outside. His mouth widens upwards as he heads inside and up to the top floor, where he finds Momo in the living room right beside his mother. Mom. Yui Rosa. Midoriya. Izuku gazes at his beautiful friend, face contorted with an expression he's as yet unable to identify. It looks to be a mixture of sadness, fear, and gratitude. She continues saying, I'd like to talk in private if that's. That's okay, sure, he answers, and soon they head into his bedroom leaving his understanding mother behind. Once those doors close, she makes her move, her arms stretch out snaking around him, closing the gap between them to conjure a warm embrace. Midoriya I was so scared. Yoyorozu. The tomato head impression returns as her entire body cuddle alongside his. His nervousness disintegrates as she shivers, drippings hitting the floor next to his foot. I almost died, I. She grips tighter onto him. It's okay. Just calm down, he says, holding her clothes instinctively. Just tell me what happened. She begins to tell her story. We were going to USJ for rescue training. When we got there, a portal opened up. An army of villains arrived out from a black mist, a warp cork user they showed up. All Might, Azawa Sensei, and 13 were there, but the warp user separated us, students. I was in the mountain zone with Juro and Kaminari, we had just finished fighting against this group of villains, and Kaminari had fried himself. It's him, Jiro, and me trying to head back to the front gate. But. Flashback. Yay. I hear Kaminari say, thrusting his thumbs up like he's trying to convince us he's okay. He's not, using too much electricity fries his brain, and now he can't even comprehend what's happening right now. He probably wouldn't even notice my ripped clothes, which are now fixed. We better head back, says Jiro as she and I exit the insulated blanket. Rising, I can hear the sound of dirt breaking away. It's coming from behind us, right, where Kaminari is. No. Turning around I see Kaminari captured, held in front of a villain his electrification must have missed. He has on a skull mask as has electricity sparking between his right hand's index and middle finger. He holds him back tightly before bringing his fingers to my classmate's throat. Wait, electricity, he was hiding, waiting to ambush us once we thought we'd won. He must be the signal jammer, the electric type Todoroki warned us about. Hands up, no moving, and no quirks allowed. If I even see you blink, he dies, is the man's threat. Kaminari's helpless at this point. He's wary enough to know he's in danger of that electricity, otherwise he wouldn't be a sweaty mess. Without hesitation, Jiro and I raise our hands in defeat. Anything is better than losing one of our own. Oh, why did we have to be so careless? We underestimated these people. I can hear the sound of his electricity crackle in the air, meaning he's serious like the others. As an electric type myself it hurts thinking I might have to kill him. But I will if I have to, says the villain. You know. Jiro, why are you talking now? I've always thought this about Kaminari, but you electric quirk users tend to be natural born winners. What is she doing? Forget being a hero, you can have all types of jobs. Wait, is she distracting him? Why become a villain? Surely there must be a good reason. Taking a glance at him, it looks like she's preparing a surprise attack. All her earphone jack needs to do, is reach her speaker. The Kaminari's getting electrocuted. Nice try, what, you thought I wouldn't notice. Only a moron would fall for that trite thought pattern. He completely saw through us. This is nothing like I studied. No, the situation isn't hopeless. I can create tear gas, and make him drop him. It's made of, come on, concentrate. Kaminari is counting on you. Before we could do anything else, something comes from behind and pushes me down. My head hits the concrete. Some of those villains must have woken up because another person is holding down Jiro. Heroes in training should take hostage situations seriously. It's either your lives or his, make your choice. Is this it? Is this where it ends for me? To be killed by this man, or to abandon Kaminari, we can only choose one. No, I doubt they'll keep their words. We're going to die here, I don't want to die yet. There are so many things I want to do, I have to do. Midoriya, mother, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Then flashback. Yoyorozu. Izuku speaks as he holds her. Hearing that frightens him. What happened afterward? She breathes a bit to recover from the trauma of her hopelessness. Snipe and the other teachers showed up and saved everyone. Because All Might was fighting that thing, he was preoccupied and hurt. I didn't see the fight. Izuku places a hand on her cheek, asking, You're okay now though, right? She sniffs and nods. I was so scared. I thought I'd never see you and mother and father again. Those words stop his heart for a bit. He didn't know she cares this much about him. It's okay. It's all over now, he says, hoping his words can convince her to cease the tears. You went through that experience, but you don't have to let it consume you. You've gained experience, you know how serious villains are, and now you can become better. The creation girl looks up at him. Midoriya, I froze. When I was trying to use my quirk, I froze and couldn't think of how to use it. I just... She pauses. 
I just froze up, unable to do anything. I couldn't think of what to do. I was just afraid. She finally releases him, much to the tomato head's relief and disappointment, to sit on the bed. I don't know how you can do this, how do you not be afraid in the midst of danger? What are you talking about? He replies, finally coming down from his blush high. I, I'm always afraid. She gives a weird look. Eh? He takes a seat in the chair adjacent to her because he's not that brave yet. Concealing my secret identity isn't the only reason I wear a mask. It's also to hide my fear from my enemies. From where he stands he can see she's shocked by that statement. So he presses on adding. When I fought Trapezius headgear, I froze up too. I don't know what would have happened if all might didn't save me. But when I fought him again this morning and that trauma came back, I had to force myself to put it aside the only way I could. Izuku thinks back to that morning. I saw a frightened family in trouble, and myself the only thing standing between them. As much as I wanted to make up a plan, I had to act or else they could die. Even though I was afraid, they were just as scared, so I had to do something to overcome that fear, and that's how I won. Looking at her he notes her expression is much calmer. So, I know what you're feeling. If you want to talk more, I'm here. She reaches into her purse taking out a handkerchief to wipe her moist eyes. Thank you. So, do you want to talk more Yoyorosu? Pieces of his heart twinge when those lips of hers spread upward into a smile, one so much more radiant than any woman's he's ever met. If only you can call me Momo, Izuku. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoyed. If you want a next part of this video, like subscribe, and comment down below, and turn on that bell notification, and also check out the other videos that I have created, and enjoy. See you in the next video. Peace.